find that space for save down as the game scales on. We'll see. Prepare Should be ready in this game number two. And again, like all of these combinations from G2IG just feel so good, right? Like nothing to say can pump a lot of damage into Chrono. You don't even need to connect with Monet to get this damage out. Right? You, you've got a line that can just TP in with Finger, get the Chrono, and then Thunder God's Rat. And you, you basically find a kill for free every single time that's up. Patience here from, from G2IG. The wait on the high ground seems like Bepin will do the exact same. This time around, both sides looking for a, a very early team fight. We have five man smoke here from IG. They'll go for the big wraparound through the bottom lane. Because Bet Boom, just going to hold on to the high ground of that Radiant Jungle for now. Because we are going to have a quick pause out for both sides to really think about this. <laughs> Manet is in a very interesting position as well because he's just on the river right now. So he could get caught before his whole team's even there. But no, he's going to walk away towards the T1 mid tower now while the rest of his team does continue to sneak up through the bottom lane. Wards will get down. They'll have vision over the high ground now. They'll see the bat rider. Meanwhile, Manet well and truly has left the building. Nightfall, though, is looking to secure the bounty, but Baboka is going to rock up. They'll get the Earth Spike to start. They'll find the bounty, and they should have themselves a kill as well as Nightfall. Going to regret showing up in the end. Ultimately, G2IG, very, very patient, but it certainly looks to pay off. Yeah, they're already applying a little bit of pressure as well onto Toronto, Tokyo. Even JT just hanging forward along with Xnova. Not going to be able to find a follow-up, but certainly a great start already for Dadar's side. And not the best feeling in the world for Nightfall. I mean, he doesn't lose much gold, but just giving all this EXP out is massive. Earth Spike into Torrent again. And that's something they're going to have to consider every single time walking into this lane. Just this chain stuns. It does leave JT without Tidebringer level 1, but First Blood does pay for itself there. You don't mind too much. You'll just soak up into 2 and you'll be happy afterwards anyway. Oh, absolutely. He's going to have a double wave on the way in just a moment into his T1 tower. So happy days for sure for G2IG. Of course, mid lane, GPK, nothing to say are going at it. Feels like one of those lanes where nothing may happen. You know, I, I can certainly see some kill potential, but it also feels like a lane where just nothing could happen and both sides could just secure some fun. Yeah, I, I think this lane is way more down to just how well you control runes, right? Even the two minute rune is going to be pretty big. If nothing stays denied off of all runes into four and six minutes, it's not going to feel great. His attack range is short enough that he's within the striking distance of Whirling Death, allowing GPK some play. But there's always a little bit of threat and trading back. GPK also has the value point from Reactive, so the right click trades aren't going to feel as smooth here. He has a lot of Iron Branches needed to be cheeky, but oh, already dropping very low. At least has the bottle to top up with. Well, meanwhile, bottom lane, Toronto Tokyo actually secures a kill onto Baboka, and that was still at the level 1 mark. Actually hits level 2 off the back of that kill, but just able to abuse the flame break to secure the kill onto the line, and but JT doesn't really seem to mind anyway. He's going to get a bracer out of that anyway. Baboka will go ahead and bring some items back for the Kunkka. And ultimately, I mean, just the, the Kunkka doesn't seem stressed at all. He's fine. Yep. Playing with Tidebringer, it is a little bit slower now to look for kill potential without all the heroes here. So you're not going to be looking to just run down Toronto, Tokyo in time soon. But he is cutting off the effectiveness of this Batrider support. Already low on mana. You know, you're giving JT a lot of room to just trade blows with Nightfall. Nightfall can't just run up. Rocket Barrage with a threat of Chain Stuns. There's always that trade with Tidebringer as well. You're set for a decent enough time here for JT. And Nightfall not going to lag too far behind. Last lane we haven't talked about is up top, Monet on the Faces Void, hanging around with Xnova. He's trading blows with Save on the Toss, just trying to get some D-Wards. Up and, along with Miero, of course, on that Viper. This lane's probably one of the more static lanes as well. Um, it's just, it's a Viper lane, you don't really want to mess with it. At the same time, can he really stop Monet from farming? Not fully, he can make it uncomfy while time walks up low levels, but... You're not going to fully hold back the Faces Void from healing. There's enough sustain here as well to share with Exnova, so 
The threat isn't as big, unless Save can find some really good isolations with the shard snowball down the line. See how well they can control the, the creep wave. Like, I, I like this little pool going on here at the top lane. You see X Nova just pulling it away with the enchanted creep, getting the creep wave back behind the tier one tower. That's what you like to see. X Nova though, don't lose the way. Oh, save, he does at least get one away. That's not a big deal. X Nova, he's looking to just reset the creep equilibrium in that top lane, and Monet desperately needs it. The shards are out, Monet, he's gonna get trapped up by the T1 tower. He'll go for a TP play though, and he's gonna be just fine. Instead, they'll try to apply more pressure onto X Nova. He's also gonna be just fine though, and Monet finally has some creeps to hit safely. In fact, he has too many creeps to hit safely. Does find big important ones for himself, and you are getting not as much as you want for the Viper. I don't think this is enough effort, enough pressure to make Monet uncomfy again, but we're getting that steady EXP gain up. We aren't seeing any emphasis onto the mid though, so four minute runes just come. You're able to, you are able to steal it away with GPK, but you still get one for nothing to say, so he's still able to harass back. And overall, just a steady time in the lanes. A little bit of trading back and forth. I would say level 6 for nothing to say is massive though. Just again, Thunder God's Wrath threat across the map can provide a lot of opportunities here for the side of G2IG. Whereas for GPK, I mean, he could leave that lane and start to make rotations, but he doesn't have Timber Chain up and laning mid. So doesn't have an easy way of just getting on top of these heroes and looking for that burst in comparison to the Zeus across the map. Mid lane, but Boka, he's going to show up. Just gets a bit of a... A ward down by nothing to say, but that's going to be about it. You see, not much they can do about GPK at the moment. Save and, and Miero still trying to be a little bit more aggressive here, but so we're just going to ensure they do not uh, not get too close. As... And they, they're still finding plenty of CS. Bottom lane in the meantime. X is out into Toronto, but he's also going to be safe. Seems like G2IG not too interested in getting too aggressive. Yeah, it is really surprising. I know you've said it about three times now, but... There are only nine CS difference between Monet and Miero. That's, a uh, Nowhere near enough, it feels. Uh, not quite. I mean, it's still a nice dent to have. Hold on. No, now nothing to say. Miero, he's gonna find out the hard way that he is just dead. Problem is as well, Save left the building to go into the mid lane to try and pick off that Zeus. And uh, sadly for Save, the Zeus was coming to him. Yeah. Kind of dodgy trigger with Save going up onto the bounty first. But it does work out. Again, with level 6 for nothing to say, he's got global threat as well. Whereas for GPK, he's just stuck mid. And he went whirling death, reactive, no timber chain, no way of gap closing. So he's just stuck to kind of force in the creep wave. His impact on the Timber Saw is not going to be felt until a little bit longer. Does have the value point up now. So there is some potential to play now, but you can say it's not leaving top. He wants to bully this poor old Viper. Why the hell not? It's Viper. You kill him a couple times, suddenly he's just useless. They are pressuring the top T1 tower anyway, and they're going to get away with it. With the Siege Creep up and the Enchanted Creep, there's nothing to stop them from taking this T1 tower. Against the Viper of all things, they will secure the tier one top tower at seven minutes in. And there's just nothing they can do about it. Like, GPK will show up now, but Monet's already just time walked away. X Nova's gonna scout out the Timber Storm, and he'll just go for a TV play out. Does get it cancelled, but does it really matter? There's more TPs incoming. They're gonna go for the fight. X Nova has gone down, but Monet, he's after GPK now. Save will go down first. The X back into the boat from the Conquer. They'll lose the Timber Sword of Boot. And this is all at the cost of a position 5 inch. Another great fight for G2IG. It is. It is some much needed space, at the very least, for Nightfall, forcing the rotation out from GT, giving a lot of free room out for Dejara to just play his own game. Working onto the Chrysalis, into probably the Ags and BKB down the line. Not going to take too long for Dejara to kind of hit that mark with a free lane. But that early aggression is up for the side of G2IG. You do need a lot of support levels here for BB to kind of start playing it. Right? You, you want the Snowball Punch, you want the Lasso back from Toronto. You need some room for this 
bat right to farm up as well and doesn't feel like he's really finding that much space for himself just yet. They are collapsing onto mid side of G2I. G2I again still still set to go. Getting some good D wards. Inching closer to that to the red stat. Six mark for Boboka. He's got the smokes ready as well. And it just doesn't feel like you'd have that much play on Betboom. Not, not until these levels are up in your supports. Here we go again. Miero. He's the target. There is no rest for the wicked, John. You know, I can't say I feel bad for this Viper. I just can't say <laughs> it. <laughs> like, I might dare say I enjoyed that. <laughs> I, it's a bit strange. You didn't say you were enjoying all of GPK's deaths in the last game, right? Oh, but You're I was. enjoying the arrows. But I was, Jonathan. <laughs> I didn't oh. say it, but you best believe I was. X Nova. Oh, that's oh. a nice earth spike. A Ravager from Baboka. Nothing to say. Trying to get to work. He'll have the ult up in one. The Chrono, it's perfect. Manet, he's going to find the Timber on top. This time, I don't. I do feel a little bit worse for GPK, though he does get away. John, he's all right. Yeah, perfectly fine. Does manage to bail out. No mana left. On nothing to say to keep that chase. They mitigate their losses, but they're only finding supports in these trades. You're getting some good activity out from Monet. And good early Chrono. Doesn't find the most, but he's there for some activity at the least. Baboka still about to hit six. Does have six now. So finger is ready. GPK, oh, you don't GPK want might have to. No, certainly not. Arcane Rune picked up here by save. Baboka desperate to try and get a kill with that finger. Not going to have the opportunity. Nightfall, though. I mean, he's looking kind of tasty down at the bottom lane if you wanted to smoke or rotate. Would be a juicy target. Doesn't have anything defensive. No lifesteal. Again, just trying to go for Chrysalis into a straight BKB. So not, not looking to rush Ags. Want some early presses. A little bit different from what we've seen from Gyrocopter builds in terms of the order. And I suppose it's it's sensible enough to just stop him from being an easy target. Still, G2IGR, still looking for him. They absolutely are. Scanning. Nightfall. I mean, maybe realizing he's being chased. In fact, the nice scan will reveal that they are coming. Wards are down. Nightfall. He'll still but he'll stick by the bottom tier one tower. Pings are coming out though. They know that Nightfall is there somewhere. JT will find him. X is out. Boat will fly in. Miero, he's teeping to try and help. Finger? Not out yet. Nightfall, he's no. still alive. They haven't got enough damage. Nightfall is okay for now. And in fact, he will be perfectly fine. Miero teeping in at the right moment does save the day. The raindrop does enough for him to live true of that burst. And that feels awful for Boboka. No finger for two minutes, no charge, no build up for the 15. Dragon War Hero is down now. JT, shards are out to lock him down, save with a very nice setup, and JT will just melt to the damage of GPK. So suddenly, Bet Boom, even with that tough lane for the Viper, they are 2k ahead. And obviously, when it comes to the fight department, they're not doing too badly either. They are able to respond quite easily against G2YG. Yeah, I mean, again, with GPK having the levels up now, having a max out chain, being able to leverage that damage up, to rip apart something like the Konka, doesn't take too much for that Timber Saw to be here and to just melt bases. And they've also got the levels on the supports. And again, you've given a lot of free room out to Toronto Tokyo. He's got the blink up. Blink Lasso is ready on to support Bat, who's been inactive this entire time. They've been basically playing 4v5. But now they've got an ace in the hole. They've got a way of just getting these initiations so much easier now. Let's see if G2IG are ready. They haven't seen Toronto Tokyo in a while. They should know that he's been farming up Blink with no punishment. And that, and that Blink should be ready now. If they get caught off guard by it, it's going to be a bit of a snowball effect. And Betboom team can start to look for openings. If they catch out, say, nothing to say... It's going to be a massive pickoff. It absolutely will. Mid lane. DPK will get the chain cancelled. Toronto Tokyo on the high ground of that Radiant Triangle. Going to Radiant reveal himself. Is Nightfall attack. is around the corner. In fact, save is right behind with GPK. They are smoked up. 
be big here for Beth Boom if they can find the, the mid Zeus. The G2IG not moving up quite yet. They are just kind of abusing the creep here from X Nova. Get to the high ground. Keep in mind, Monet is just at the top lane with a Chrono available, but he doesn't really have the most damage right now available in that void. It's like G2YG realizing that the Bet Boom has probably grouped up. They will leave the area. Bet Boom, they are not really going to pursue. So smoke or no smoke, TPs or no TPs, they are just going to go back to fun. Yeah. I think the big thing for Bet Boom is, again, they're getting away with a lot of just free farm coming out. Just free farm coming through for Nightfall. BKB being formed up by the Jaro relatively quickly here. Number one in that worth for the gyro as well. Just making great use of the flak. You're getting some room out for JT to farm. He is only one part away from the Ags, to be fair. So and that is going to be a big spike. Especially as you're only really farming up one BKB early on here on the side of Bet Boom. And Torrent Storm is going to do a lot of work. I'm actually surprised JT managed to farm up this much. Like he is number two in that work, sure. But to be so close to the Ags at 15 minutes in is kind of, kind of ridiculous with his timing. It's a lot of patience from both sides. And that Agzo, you, you kind of already said it, but the, the impact it does have is kind of ridiculous. Like, without the BKBs up, you just... You can't fight into that Torrent Storm. It's just ri absolutely ridiculous how much disabled it does come in. There's your Ags up now. You pretty much expect an immediate smoke out off the back of that Ags, and looks like Baboka is going to pop on. They run perhaps towards the Conker. They do still have to take down that bottom T1 tower, so there is work to be done around that bottom lane. Nightfall has been farming up a storm around that area to boot, so it will help them quite a bit to just kind of take over that, that position of the map. They will try for a kill attempt on Nightfall, but he's already got, kind of gotten his way out of there. He realizes they are around. Yep. JT also just showed up in Vision, so they should have been able to spot out the full Ags. Not going to want to play into that. Instead, again, just using this time to farm up effectively. They still have that Blink Lasso ready to be revealed from Toronto. They will smoke up. They might find nothing to say. Hey, nothing to say. Being chased down, however, it seems like they're gonna find the end first. So X Nova is down. Baboka will follow. And nothing to say, can do really nothing about it. But here comes the cavalry. Mane, he's right onto the Viper. They want Miro again, and they're gonna have it. So two supports will go down, but you get yourself an offlane Viper. Yeah. It's a nice take for G2IG. Doesn't cost them too much. They don't pop Thunder Gods. They do pop Chrono, but Mane's just looking for small opportunities here. Still a bigger win for Betboom overall in net worth. That is the blink reveal as well in Toronto, Tokyo. You're pretty happy with it. Could have gotten nothing to say, but he was outside of vision. Rather unfortunate. However, you do have the blink up now for Baboka. So again, easier times to initiate. It does feel like that's one thing that has been lacking from G2IG. Just this instant jump to help disable someone and get the pickoff going. Outside of just time walk chrono. Blink hex earth spike is going to be the that opener now for G2IG, and they should actually be feeling confident enough to force another one here. No lasso to worry about. Viper is still a non-issue right now. Still have the Torn Storm as well. They'll collapse onto that mid. But they will. Not up from save. X is out immediately onto the Tusk. Meanwhile, Baboka, a very nice earth by connecting onto two, but Bet Boom, they are collapsing mid lane right onto JT. He will pop the Torrent Storm, but he never got the boat off in time. Meanwhile, Nightfall is on the nothing to say. He'll take down the Zeus in time. And X Nova, not going to make it out either. Caught by Toronto. That'll be a double for Nightfall. And that's a, that's a big loss for G2IG. Like, that was your Torrent Storm committal. For the first time, and it, it just amounts to nothing. It's just down to this quirkier build order from Nightfall, right? Like, again, going for Chrysalis into BKB rather than the Ags. But it pays but, off there. He's not affected by the Torrent Storm. He doesn't care about Zeus's damage. He just stands and right clicks down. It's more than enough. He goes back for the Aegis now, but again, this this it's the build order. Nightfall just has a good read as, as to what he wants to do in this game. And for G2IG, that's just not the fight to force. Like they have that Orchid up on Miero. He just silences JT. And he just gets whittled away standing in that 
That's a bit, and it just gets barely enough HP to cast Torn Storm, not enough to cast a Ghost Ship. So their big turnaround potential there for G2RG is just gone. And Monet is not ready to show up as well, but no Chrono. It just doesn't pan out the way they'd want to, clumping up so tightly. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Gotcha. Radiant are scanning. Illusion. Kaboka, he's in good position to break. Oh no, he moves at the wrong moment. Manet gets caught by a lasso. The ravage out from Kaboka though, but it's not enough. It's, it's such a shame too. Had he stuck around for half a second extra, he would have broken the smoke. And probably would have allowed Manet to get out of there. Unfortunate. Nova once again. A nice start here for Bet Burp. The rest of G2IG have shown up, but they do not feel confident to go for the fight. It seems like Bet Burp are well and truly in control of this game, number two. Very, very potent as of late, and only about 40 gold away from having the Ags up on the Gyrocopter, so even more damage to come out. You start to wonder now, like G2IG, do, do you really want to keep fighting? Because it feels like at this rate, with 7k net worth behind you you're much better off just hitting some creeps yeah they need they need some catching up i think if you are confident with just playing with chrono finger and ten god's rat you do still have burst play like chrono into a follow-up torn storm can feel massive but they're just not in position to do that look the wards out from bet boom can spot every movement love this ward right in front of the tier two by the tree line just gives so much key information, can break, can help you spot out smokes as well. Helps you try to invade the triangle, just does so much work here, and it's really hard to spot out, even with a Zeus or G2IG. I'm just forced to hug a relatively small area of the map, just keep playing build up. I think the key point again is like BKB on JT, Manta on Monet. That's when you start to feel a little bit more confident, but Bet Boom, with the Ags up on Nightfall, they could easily go Roche, they've got the damage. Kaboka. Oh, Kaboka's gone. Oh, he's just completely blown up. Oh, Roshan, of course. Not gonna last very long. Bet Boom. Absolutely no issues here taking the Roshan away. And that's like, just, like, do you want to just keep the farm game here for Bet Boom? Do you want to get a bit more aggressive? Feels like you can really afford to do whatever the hell you want. Knight falls into just this amazing position as well, where he's just pulling way too far ahead of this void. It's about 5k ahead in terms of net worth at the moment. With the axe up, it just feels like there's no real contest. Like, Nightfall, if he wants to join his team, he can. If he wants to farm, he can. G2IG, they just have no answer. No. There's no clear answer presenting itself either, outside of just a perfect chrono play with follow up. Again, that's just not something Monet can easily pull off right now until he has a Manta up. Again, it's just this, it's a combination of these timing to be turning off, the fall of this vision coming out that prevents movement forward. You're just not gonna be able to do much. JT just being a little bit cheeky with the X back and trying to clear out creeps. BKB, only about 100 gold away. So that's one bit of good, good news here for G2IG, but not quite enough. It does feel like for Bet Boom, though, you do want to keep running. Like, you cannot afford to just sit back and allow the Stasis Void to try playing his own game, to try to scale up. You know, like, you're having nothing to say the time to farm into the Manta, into the BKB, which it does look like he has, at least has the Manta up. With a Shard, can scale into damage quite nicely here. Bet Boom, 
Off taunt, off onto the Tormentor. Can gun for the tier 2 as well, no problems. G2 IG. They're not even trying to clump up as a unit here. They're just splitting the map, farming top, pushing in back on mid. They know they just don't have a fight. It's just too much. It's too much to ask for a big chrono into like perfect spell usage. It's way too much with how much jump options Bethune has. Oh yeah, the, the Daedalus almost completed now on, on Nightfall as well. In fact, it is completed now on Nightfall. Here you go. What answers do you have coming? Like, man, he's trying for a Manta. Seems like mostly just defensive items are being committed here by, by G2IG. A lot of four staffs I'm seeing. Run through from Bet Boom up, up, up towards the mid lane once again. They'll find a regeneration room now for Nightfall. Perhaps a tier 2 mid tower. Like, if you know you can't be stopped, you may as well just take whatever objective you want. Oh. Then it goes Wrath. I mean, Toronto Tokyo is going to lose his life at the very least, so you've. You get a free kill for Baboka. That's something. Kings that are coming is. out towards X Nova down at the bottom lane here from, from Bet Boom, but it's a, it's a pretty far chase to, to make here for a position five end. Yeah. You're you're happy enough in G2 IG to at least find something. It it has taken them a long time to get that punishment onto Toronto though. Like again, this bat rider for the most part of this game has been farming like a core, building stacks and just clearing out the jungle. No one spotted to kind of find him until this point for the side of G2IG. They're also starting to invade a triangle a little bit. Again, they don't really have vision right now, but they've got some part of the map to easily farm around. I can say BKB not too far off now as well. So more protection up front, especially from the burst that they're trying to leverage here with GPK. It still leaves the question of the physical output of Nightfall though, which again, I still feel like there's no clear answer for just that raw right click coming out. Oh. Oh. My GT. BKB out. Lasso is there to hold him down, though. In comes Nightfall for all the damage they require, and the Konka is just annihilated. In fact, Nightfall found a double kill without even trying. But Boca going down to the flat cannon damage as well. It really is just too much. They are trying to buy as much time for Manet as they possibly can, but Manet is still just 7k. In fact, almost 8k behind the gyrocopter now. You need to get into that stage now where, where Nightfall is just building into a satanic. So chances are the Chrono is just going to do nothing anyway, because he'll, he'll, he'll heal through it. It's tough. It is. Again, they, they just don't have real good play potential here on G2IG. You have like Blink Hex, or it's Spike, that's it. Maybe you can get the burst off with Thunder Gods plus Finger, but we haven't really seen them play it around out outside of that one pick off in Toronto. And then the wider team fight, it's just down to that Chrono. Again, even if Monet lands that Chrono without the magic damage follow-up, it doesn't feel like you have enough. It also doesn't feel like JT's able to do as much as he wants to here on the Funko. Again, his lane was all right for the most part, but his impact afterwards, this, like, this Ags reveal wasn't on point for JT. The BKB is not doing him too many favors with punch up still. Kind of holding him back from save. Like, I don't know, it's, it's it's in stark comparison to a Centaur game where he's just able to dictate how these fights go, go for the blink, be the playmaker. Honka can be in that way, but certainly not lining up in this game to be very playmaker-ish. It feels like a lot of pressure is on Boboka actually to open these fights for them. Oh, here we go, G2IG. They're going to pop a five-man smoke. And they seem to have some some form of an idea of where they need to or what they need to do rather, but they don't really know where to go. Tormentor will be taken. Miero will pick up a shards for himself. I mean the smoke's good and well, but Oh, maybe they can find Miero. BKB, Manet does have to Chrono to get this kill. The Viper's taking a bit longer than they would like though, so Nightfall is here now to try and 
time secure. Some kind of a straggler. They'll make the jump in. Lasso is out. They've already taken down JT. And now, well, they can really clean up. X Nova has gone to boot. At least they get everyone else out of there. Why well, say that? But Boca was still around there for a moment, but looks like he does TP out successfully. So you get Miero, but it still costs you a hell of a lot. It's a... Uh... It's way more costly for G2IG. Like, these kills are just feeding into Batboom so well. And they lose the Wisdom Rune, not a big deal at this point. You're at the point where even Toronto Tokyo is looking for the BKB. Like, the BKB just doesn't save you for JT. Every single time he's been caught out, he hasn't been able to get the Torn Storm off. He hasn't been, been able to get the Ghost Ship off. Down to the Punch and the, and the Lasso. There's just no protection against all these spell immunity piercing uh, spells. They need... Feels like you need a Lincolns to come in here. But there's barely any farm to find for the side of G2IG. I don't know if you can even dream of a Lincolns at this point. And it just takes so much. Even that kill on Miro, it takes them Chrono. So now you don't have a Chrono for the team fight, and Batboom can just smoke and go again. But they will. Towards Boboka, they're gonna find the lion first up here for save. The save, I don't believe, actually spotted him out. Boboka reveals himself anyway. And Mane is just north of that tier 2 tower, but of course now he's very well aware that Batboom is there, so he will immediately just get towards the other side of the map. But they've got the tier 2 tower. There's just no contest. Meanwhile, D2 idea. I mean, they'll take their outpost back, but now they reveal their position. Meanwhile, X Nova goes down to Toronto, Tokyo. Mira is still having a look around through the dive triangle to see if he can find himself a target to, to try and secure, but nobody stuck around. Everyone's just running towards dire base. Like, even Manet's just there right now. Like, it's like, where do you farm? Where's safe? Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like anywhere is safe. There's just nothing holding back that room. All their, spirits, all their spells are low cooldown. They don't really need to wait for too much in terms of uptime. They can just keep shoving in, keep playing as a unit. Just basically do what they want. G2IG for their part are just too under farm to be a major threat. Like you've been talking about this, 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 this disparity with Monet. It's not been getting any better. We're not seeing any catch up for Monet. Barely any in comparison to Nightfall. And 18K lead, 19 to nine. Next Roshan in half a minute. Bedroom can just gun for Roche, look for high ground, butterfly coming out for nightfall. So even if he does get chronoed up, a lot of that damage will just miss. They'll go for a smoke play out, maybe. Oh, they are gonna try. No. I mean, it's a lot of damage you're hoping oh, for here. They God. are desperately trying, and they've got him at the very least. Nightfall is down. Save is gone. A boot. Perhaps it can work. Miero, he's not a big target himself, but GPK, oh. he certainly is. They'll make the jump in. Mane about to fall, but still gets the time walk away just barely. GPK still trying. Does find X Nova. Force the BKB and just chain TP away, however. He will make it out. And that's the, the first sign of life I think I've seen from G2IG this game. It's finally finding a fight that works out for him and, and finding Nightfall. That's that's the fight they needed. That right before the butterfly gets formed up, right before that evasion is a factor. Big opening for them. You can see just how much damage Nightfall has. So just the side gunner. <laughs> just one flak hitting Boboka into the side gunner in Chrono and just melts. And still the follow-up's not clean. Right, like the follow through from Betmoon is still there. There's still a massive threat with the burst damage that you have here on GPK. And again, the threat of Lasso is still big. I think a big factor there is save. If save didn't die trying to go for a blink into a snowball, then you might have been able to find a little bit more if that fight dragged on. You still have access to Roshan here as well for Betmoon. And with Chrono having been expended for Monet, it doesn't feel like they can counterfight in that area at all. So Betboom still has the security lined up for themselves in that objective, knowing that G2IG just can't walk up and contest it right now. Oh, top lane. Next Nova may get caught. Toronto. He's out with the lasso, so they are going to secure another easy kill onto the edge. Oh, 
it's not the biggest kill. I mean, at the very least, it is just an enchantress. Still, they are waiting around here, GPK in Toronto, Tokyo. Nightfall's just soloing Roche, basically, huh? I mean, why the hell not, right? Like, it's... He can. It's just, that's how far ahead he is. He just can. Jeez. It's the freest Roche I've seen. And can G2 IG just... I mean, they can fight now with Chrono, but... And how about the damage? You can take care of one life in Nightfall. Two lives, stretching it. I don't, I don't see that happening. Their limited, with their limited utility here for g 2 ig to play with. Like, you're banking on trying to burst him down while forcing out BKB on first life, perhaps? That, that feels like the ideal scenario. And then it just doesn't feel like that's a, something Nightfall will do. It's like, it's not a mistake I can see Nightfall making at this point. Butterfly, only one part away now as well. Evasion's gonna be a bigger factor for Monet, even if, if he lands that Chrono on the big target. He's not gonna be doing as much damage as he'd want to onto that. And something like the MKB is a little bit of a pipe dream right now. Four our faces void. 13k lead maintained by Betboom. G2 IG. And they're working on some other stuff. And you've got Lincoln's coming out for nothing to oh, say. I... Oh. Yeah, they found the big one. They've got Monade and they've taken him down. No problem. There is buyback available on the void, but you you, you kind of just see how easy it is for Bet Boom. Once they get the lockdown in the void, he just absolutely melts. And Mane, not really in a position where he wants to commit buyback at the moment. That's for, he's already behind enough as it, but he has no choice. Oh, nightfall! I mean, they'll drag him back. He has an Aegis up, plus the Satanic available whenever. He does use it that time around. The thing is, the tier 3 tower is basically already gone. There it goes. You've still got an Aegis, you've still got a BKB. You'll have a secondary satanic usage any moment now for Nightfall. He might just lose the first life, but a nice snowball is going to buy him a little bit more time. So Nightfall is able to just get out of there. Has the satanic back up now. Just does pop it. Heals himself back up. Last one oh, was there. God. They have caught out at least one in the Kunkka. The JT will go down for the sake of save, losing his own life. Mane does not buy back. He does hold out. And they hold on to that resource. They only lose the melee rack, so there's a range to go back for. Big one has fallen, very least. And you still have Aegis for Nightfall. Boboka? Are they going to try into Nightfall? Chrono's available. Nightfall is basically on his own. Though he does have an Aegis up. But it seems like they might have the first life. Eventually, I mean. It's taken a long time. In fact, never oh, mind. God. Never mind they can't do it. Yeah. You know, you see that, John? I would have just called. I would have been like, you know what? <laughs> I've seen enough. In fact, Mane has been caught out. Mane will be okay to get to the high ground. <laughs> if I see that crap in my game, I call it. In fact, now it's even worse. Yeah. He's got a butterfly now available. Yeah, he, he's had it for... He had it in that last fight. So all that evasion, just the misses. <laughs> no damage, it's just not enough. Nightfall's just way too durable. They can't take care of the first life. Only a minute and a half, though, for that Aegis. It's a window of play here for G2IG if they can hold out long enough and not lose anything else. Can't find a way to play with a Chrono, get that lockdown in, get that damage flowing through. We'll see. Lose the tier 3 mid, but the racks don't stand. And the options are limited to really just Chrono. Like, that that's what it has to boil down to. Chrono into a follow-up Torrent Storm, or you know, wait out the BKB since it's Torrent Storm. I don't know, it's just it's difficult. Although... I mean, they're, they're trying to drag back the gyro. Problem is Nightfall... Oh, hold on a minute. Maybe they can get the Aegis up. In fact, Nightfall, he's not popping the Satanic, so it looks like he wants to lose his first life. It is about to expire anyway. Oh. Chrono is out. They've caught a couple here. Mane, can he get the job done? He's taken out Toronto and save and Miero, but now the Gyrocopter's the big the big target, but oh. they've got him. An ultra oh. kill out for Mane. Hold on a goddamn minute. How does that happen, John? 
I mean, they, they nailed the perfect combination. Chrono, right as the Aegis pops, have a little bit of hold on the pop out. Everyone's stuck in the same area. So Monet can focus on the squishier targets like this Bat Rider, like this Viper, like this Tusk. They just melt. They don't have butterflies. There is no miss for Monet to have to worry about there. And it's just clean. They drag a little bit too far back onto the gyro. Not popping the Satanic. Probably cost them there. Now trying to go for that reset instead. Doesn't manage to really get any space to pop the Satanic afterwards. And no teammates to help him. It it was a little bit shaky for Betboom to play that close on the line. They still maintain 11k lead, but a massive swing out for G2IG. And an opportunity now to find something on the map. They take one tier two out, they're gunning for bot next. They have a creep wave making its way up, a massive creep wave at that. They can try to equalize. They stay in the game. Still not an easy game for G2IG, but if you take a look at the graphs, Mike, win probability shot down by 20% there for Betboom. Down to close to 50-50, 62 to 38. This is just classic G2IG, Mike. Now, every single yeah. time we cast these guys in qualifiers and in games, it's like, yeah, all right, we're going to go long and we're going to, you know, find a way to come back. Tower of Jack. They also proved uh, exactly why I'm not a pro player, Jonathan. They don't call it. And as you can see, <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> things are working out very nicely now. <laughs> uh, I wasn't joking. I would have called it immediately. I would have been like, boys, I, no, I don't I know. I know you would. Calling. I know. I know exactly. I know exactly. You're <laughs> like, hang in there. 7k lead now. Down from 11 yeah. when we last took a look. Next Roche, still a minute and a half, unfortunately. So G2IG can't just reel into that ASAP. The equalize, but they're getting some more Lincolns up. So they're going for the multiple Lincolns with nothing to say. And Monet, working off his own now. Refresh for GG coming out next. But that scaling can still kick in. And as long as you can kind of funnel them into a tight spot, which these years do end up clumping up quite hard. Monet's got the damage now. And he's got the levels, he's got the output, he's got the Scotty to mitigate some of that satanic healing as well. And there are some tools here to get you on the right path for the side of G2IG. I love that nothing to say is also just going for the Blood Torrent. A little bit more control, some much needed attack speed for the Zeus to really leverage all of those Lightning Hands procs. Just again, just slowly whittle away at the side of the Betboom if they do over long in any single fight. We've got the game here from Betboom and a couple smokes being bought out. Roshan may potentially respawn in 20 seconds, so big objective to play for. Of course, Betboom kind of throwing a, a pretty huge lead away that they just had, so definitely not looking to give away a free Roshan on top of that. Here come the smokes. What's the timing for Roshan? Oh. It's average. It's a, it's kind of in the middle. Yeah, but you want it to be faster if you're G2IG. Bet boom. Are going to look to force this fight out, but again, smoke out as well onto G2IG. Well, they'll clear out the creep wave, but that makes the smoke quite obvious. D2IG retreating at the right time. Xnova does get caught first, and he will go down immediately. So already a 4v5, but Xnova does buy back. 5v5 once again. GPK will get jumped, but he'll be fine. They do not have the damage for him. It's all about the chrono from Monet. He needs the fine nightfall with it. They'll go on to GPK again. They'll try for this, and this time they've got the chrono. They found both targets. They do have the gyro. Problem is they probably don't have the damage. They'll find GPK instead with that Chrono Sphere being committed. There's now Toronto. Make the jump in. Save will two. Save is gone. Toronto. Maybe going too oh far. Will buy uh, himself now as Miero in danger. Miero's gone a boot. Monet's still alive throughout all of this. Meanwhile, JT's being chased down. JT will drop. But Monet is not done. On we go to the Gyrocon. Oh my god. They have got him. Nightfall is gone. Oh my An old trick goodness. kill for Monet. Oh, that that is not how that fight should go for Betboom. They lose their lead entirely off the back of it. Just so split up. Like they went for the lasso on Monet. They did not see that Lincolns. So the lasso falls flat early on. 
It, it just gets proc. That initiation's gone. They manage to hold down, kill off Toronto. They get them slowly moving forward. The BKB pop early there from Archiro, getting caught in Chrono. GPK gets him wasted as well with all of the magic damage output here. And they get the Aegis. This is the opening G2IG we're looking for. MKB for Monet to kind of help deal with Nightfall now. And now your question is, on the side of Betboom, can you get the last two you need before the Chrono that G2IG needs comes out? It becomes a scary question. They've got the Lincolns. They've got ways of just stopping that. They've got the four staff at the least here for Toronto Tokyo to try to counteract that. But again, just it's, it's falling flat for Betboom. That last fight just doesn't line up. And just the regen on Monet, just barely enough HP to get that time walk back to reset and just come back in. It's been doing so much work on this face's void. It's, 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 it's a Monet special. You know, this, this hero, I've seen him play quite a few times and always does manage to really provide for us. As, I mean, Bet Boom, they are not going to be feeling very good about themselves here, John. It's, it's a pretty rough position and considering the lead you did have, it's, it's going to feel real bad that you're suddenly in a position where you're actually losing the game. And that is what Dota Plus does think. We are at 56% win probability here for G2YG. So they are indeed winning the game at the moment. And with that, I mean, G2YG, like, do they want to go high crap? They've got four minutes with an Aegis. They've got a refresher shard available. To be fair, Monet, he might just finish off his Satanic first before we get to that stage, but... I believe it is actually on the way, and there it is. Satanic now available. Feeling so comfy now in this space is void. Going for the research afterwards. It's just to have that consistent double chrono, double BKB. Take the gate down bot. They don't manage to clean up the top tier too, but one team fight here. And it, it just comes undone. And again, it's just down to like not having an answer for Chrono here. We're at that point where Faces Void is the be-all end-all. Like it's just Chrono. You just don't have a way of stopping it unless you get like, I don't know, something crazy for Toronto Tokyo. Like say Aether Lens plus the Psychic Headband to just have Lasso into the Chrono, I guess. If you can pop the Lincolns first, perhaps. But that, that's really hoping for a lot there. Boom, they better start hope. Radiance top tower is under attack. G2 IG. We're gonna move on to the high ground. Two minutes left on the Aegis for Monet. Net worth is, is basically even right now between these two teams. Refresher orb now available on JT as well, so you've got a lot of problems with those torrent storms and the tidal waves and the ghost ships. So many things to be worried about here against this Conker. It's just going to be a slow chipping away as well. Keep in mind, you've got double chrono up, so it's... You don't need to rush this. There's just no necessity no. for that. Now, they've got a lot of free room to just kind of keep shoving in, slowly poke. It's still a lot of Time left on that Aegis. Hmm. Trying to think. I mean, they do manage to get the Orchid, but oh. Bruno committed. They are going to try and make the jump in onto Miero and the Viper. Well, the Viper is gone. There is a Viper. The T3 Tower might just be enough here for G2IG. The Aegis is expiring in 50 seconds anyway, but. Well, Manet? Maybe he just doesn't care about not having Chrono. Again, he does have a refresher shard, but it is in the backpack right now. He'll jump in on tonight for me while a double lasso out from Toronto Tokyo. He's going to find two cores with that. JT, he is going down very quickly oh. and will drop. Nothing to say. Will drop as well. No buyback available on JT. 
Nothing to say, does at least have his own buyback. But a beautiful double lasso out from Toronto Tokyo. John, he found two cores with them. It's the eggs. That's a difference maker we were looking for from Toronto Tokyo. Not enough Lincolns to save you there. Two is nice, but needed maybe a little bit more. That does just fix all the issues there. For managing to pick up that Zeus while he shared his Lincolns out. He's been spamming it onto Monet. Just don't last in one day, you find that opening. Aegis expired now. Secondary use of Chrono is still ready. But that refresh shard. And buyback gold is still there for Faces Void, but they've got that opportunity on high ground. Two full set of racks down now. Only the bot tier three and racks left. G2IG. Oh! The jump is out. A T3 tower copying so much damage. Toronto. When he's got Lasso available, he'll get away. Save will go down instead of the task. No buyback on him. Mane is on the chase here with the time walks, looking for a secondary target. Nobody's really around. It seems like everyone else is going to be able to get their way out of there. So Bet Boom, not getting too much out of that, but still able to get away with just a, a tusk uh, death, which is... You know, not, not too bad. Could have been worse. Not too bad. It does cost the buyback of nothing to say as well. It's a massive resource being expended here by the side of G2IG. They're going to need Roshan now. They absolutely have to find this Rosh. I think it's also maybe about time for JT to consider something like Lincoln's. He is working towards what seems to be the Aeon Disc. So that could also work out as the save here for himself. Let's see how long this Roche takes. That, that's, that's do or die now for G2IG. It has to be a Roshan into the high ground. Have that back up for nothing to say. Have that security for the Zeus to not get caught out. And for Betwoom, and they're hanging on well. They're only about 3k ahead. One probability is still evening out closer to 50-50. G2IG. And they're the ones two racks is behind. They're the ones with the creep waves that will just naturally shove into themselves, given enough time. They're the ones having to constantly repair this map to play with that chrono perfectly. And Betwoom, it's just been a lot more forgiving. It's going to get even more forgiving once they have this Ags up on save. Like, now you have to worry about the double lasso and the kickbacks. Only so much a Lincoln's each will do for you, if it even gets to that point. And G2IG. I'm wondering if this stalls out long enough for us to also hit that 60 minute timing, because the one thing that will ruin this for Bet Boom is a whole bunch of mirror shields. That is the one thing that could literally just ruin them. If that does happen, but that's still 10 minutes away. That would be pretty funny. Hmm. See if they do get to that I like stage, I mean, it's. Yeah. I like this from GPK as well. Like he goes for the refresh, he's got the side of vice, and double BKB, double sight. It's gonna feel pretty amazing here to just have these openings. And double sight alone, just breaking Lincolns into just instantly hexing someone up to set up is already massive in and of itself. Really quick Roshan, already back up here. But Bet Boom are not willing to give this out anymore. They're in the area. They are. Roshan will be scouted by Monet. Another refresher shard available in that Roshan. I've man smoke here from G2IG. Wrap around. Towards the bottom side of the map they go. Long wrap around through that bottom lane. Toronto is going to be the big primary target they want to take down first, though he does make his way out of there, so instead they're going to have to try and go after Miero, and they've got the Viper. No buyback available on Miero. It's a great start here for, for the side of G2IG. Oh, Mane. Oh, oh, he's with the Chrono. Was that baited or not? You, you, you have to wonder. There was vision to scout that out. GPK. He's going to go for a run with the BKB. We'll refresh just in case he needs another. Seems like he's going to be just fine. Meanwhile, though, save. I cannot say the same for him. Been left behind. 
He will go down. And now Rojan, of course, going to be well and truly available for G2IG. It's quite the way to do it, but it does work out for G2IG. After what looked like pretty awkward chase forward. We'll find the objective they came for in the first place. Another Aegis, another refresh, as you mentioned here. Monet will have that secondary Chrono still ready to go anyway. It's not the biggest loss, although JT will hang on to the refresh shard first. See if that's something they hand down. It does look like Monet wants the slot for the MKB. But she does finish up. No buyback, but only 700 gold away. And now the issue for G2IG is still trying to reach out high ground. All right. Refresh shard picked up by Monet again. Swaps out the Satanic for it. Still has two Chronos ready. They need to find that angle for the jump. And they need to pierce this high ground. Last time around with the Aegis, only found a tier three. They need so much more. They absolutely do. Such a close game here between these two teams. It's just every single game does really matter. Those juicy, juicy EPT points. IG they'll, they'll take over that radiant triangle a bit boom they're gonna hang around through the the radiant base rather just wait patiently on the high ground hope for the best here against G2IG Toronto's got a refresher orb on the way by the looks of it we'll buy out the recipe yeah, those lassos have been game changing from Toronto Tokyo so if you can find a couple of those double lassos it is absolutely massive Every single time he does manage to pull it off. The D2IG, they'll control the, the, the area around the Radiant base, but they're not feeling of course, overly confident to try and make the push onto the high ground quite yet. Still three minutes on the Aegis remaining here for Manet, and of course he's probably just waiting for the Refresher Shard to be off cooldown. You won't have access to this uh, sneaky rapier buildup that Nightfall would want. He is queuing it up for your down for tree. Not gonna have that sort of bailout tool. We'll have buyback at least, although. Is there Toronto? He's got his BKB pop, but Monet immediately just gonna pop the chrono going right after the Batrider, not playing any games. There's no buyback on Toronto. He bought the refresher orb outright, so he had no gold for the buyback. That's one down. GPK will wave them goodbye, but G2IG, they're going nowhere. The top racks oh, is the primary torn. target they want. They're going to find Nightfall now in the Gyrocopter. Oh. A double Earth Spike out. A Chrono committed. They found a couple of them. The Gyro is down. So is Save on the Tusk, but they're both going to commit buybacks. Well, surely Nightfall will. He'll watch one racks fall. There's your buyback committed now from the Gyrocopter, but GPK is already in trouble. Snowball will buy him a bit of time to try and survive through this. He'll refresh himself and go for his own BKB. Meanwhile, Nightfall jumping right in the middle of the team fight, but everyone's just kind of dispersed here from G2IG. There's now Manet looking oh. up back here, but Manet's on his own. Manet is on his own. Nobody has stuck around but him. Uh-oh. And Manet oh, is boy. looking to die. Pops the satanic, it won't matter. He is gone. Thankfully, he does have buyback. Uh, this is this is the all-in now for G2IG. He's got the buyback, but if he buys back, he doesn't have Chrono. Without that Chrono, it doesn't feel like these team fights are safe at all for G2IG. Betwoom, they did buy out. There's no Roche for them to take, but they are two racks up. They just need to throw bodies into that last set of racks. And it's just such a great splintering of that fight. It's such a good opening for Mune, but he already popped the double Chronos. The buyback from Nightfall makes all the difference there because he's out of Chronos, you know? Without that third Chrono, if he had a refresh, just don't have the tools there. And G2IG for their part, again, really great movement out from JT for the Torrent into the Tidal Wave. Find that lineup into, the double, into that great Chrono, but it's just, that was a refreshed Chrono. There's no follow through. And then after that, it's just 
free for Nightfall to clean up this fight. GPK taking a bit of damage on his way out. They are trying to push down through this bottom tier 3 tower. Try to get those mega creeps up. But it's not proving to be so easy. Toronto jumping in, looking for a lasso, not able to find one. He even popped his refresher orb. But unable to find anything. We'll be forced to just blink away. So much tension between these two teams here in this game too. And we're only two minutes away now, John, from those tier 5 items. You're, you also here have you the go. full divine up now for Nightfall. Clearing out the axe to have room for the butterfly. This is this is the all-in. No buyback, of course, having bought out earlier. But if he falls with this divine, if if the chrono comes out for Monet and it's on point, that's just the end game. It does feel like we're only one fight away from this game. I'm getting decided already. It's a little rather 50-50 game in terms of probabilities here from our graphs. Side of G2IG. They've managed to do a good job of just bringing this game this far. Like you said, a minute away from those tier 5s, a bunch of mirror shields can make this fight really awkward. Let's see if that's something that does come in here for either side, honestly. I, I, it's a lot better for G2IG to find those mirror shields, though, for sure. Here we go. Both teams are going to wait it out. Big group up here from Bebbo. Goes right into their triangle. Dyer, oh, she's too much. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're kind of prepped to go towards that Rainian triangle themselves now. So make their move in. All the ancient creeps are dead for now. Of course, they will respawn in just a second. And here we go. T5 items Come officially on. online. Come on, Winnie. What do you got? Oh, what do you got? What do you got? It's in his backpack. What do you got? Oh, Pirate Head. Eh, that's Pirate. not too bad in Faces Void, I guess. It's not too bad. It's also not amazing. It's not a mirror shield, but... It is what it is, I suppose. What's Nightfall got? Book of Sh... Pirate Head. Pirate Head! Alright, okay. We're all pirates. Fair enough. Yar. <laughs> yar har har, <laughs> I guess. Horrible. The most unenthusiastic Yar you've ever heard. <laughs> From the award-winning annals. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be completely shooting myself every time. I, I will just do that. It, it, it's very deserved. Let's see, we've got the magic lamp for nothing. To see, that's actually not bad. The hard dispel is gonna help them a lot from all of this hard control. What else may we be getting here? Will we get any Seer Stone for Baboka? That sounds fun. The longest Earth Spike you'll ever see it. Like the old talent. No, it's... Shadows. Okay, he gets something better. Yeah, that's the save they need. If anyone gets caught out, you've got that save with Book of Shadows. In fact, a Book of Shadows for Betboom would also be massive here. Do they have anything like that? What are you getting, GPK? Don't just hold a token. Show us. Yeah, these are serious choices here, John. You gotta think about it. Well, I wish we could think about it with him. Yeah, that, well, that is true. We still can't see that, as I can see, sadly. Technology is not there, Mike. See, stuff. It's just not is there. Is there for JT? That's. That's actually insane with Tidal Wave, I guess, and X. And it's also insane that they're getting away with Roshan once again on G2IG. Yep. Another refresh art, another Roche banner, another Aegis. We've got a, a Force Boots here on GPK. We've got a Pirate Hat available on X Nova. So X Nova wants to be the real carry now. Oh, he is now, yeah. I think it's fair. You cannot yeah. underestimate the value of pure damage. Uh, we've seen a lot of Enchantresses uh, 
completely own once they have something like a moon shard. Well, our hat is even better. Giant spring on, okay. uh, on on Miero. A big viper now. He is pretty scary, being that big. He is also universal as well, so this is decent damage here. Yeah. Got it. Another pirate hat. Everyone's just going for the pirate hat. To be fair, it has helped them farm back into buybacks, I suppose, as well. That's a good point. Right. So Toronto so, Tokyo doesn't have a doesn't have one, I believe. He doesn't have a, a, a T5 item yet, sadly. If he gets a seer stone, it's the most cursed stuff you could ask for. It's 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 a big range. Yeah, that lasso range will look pretty ridiculous. Or even force boots. Honestly, force boots is probably better. Nobody's helping the poor guy out. He's 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 got no creeps. In fact, they've, of course not. They've just farmed everything in this radiant jungle. Of course not. No help for the wizard, mate. Just realized Bavoka does have the Shadow Blade, which I actually do enjoy seeing on our lines. It's okay. a little bit more sneaking in and out. Move speed can help quite nicely as well. Sneaky, sneaky. They, oh, there is a Sea Stone. John, look at that. Throw the Tokyo's oh, got a wow. Sea Stone now. That is insane. Look at that range in the lasso. Yeah. Sheesh. It's just Not so hard so much easier to try. And, and it does increase the search range as well, right? It should, theoretically. I wonder if it does. I'm, I'm always confused with what does and does not count as cast range. I never buy Sea Stone, John. I, I, I wouldn't know. Never get it. <laughs> Unfortunate, like. G2 yeah, this IG. pans out. Oh, Miro? What if he just... Oh, oh, they've oh. got him. They've caught the Viper. Aeon Disc is out though. Chrono, no, it's going to be no, committed. No. Renee really wants the kill. Oh, the Fave is going to be around to save. Another Chrono committed now, finding two of them. X Nova, he's the first one to go down, but there goes Miro. They've got the Viper. Renee, he takes down safe to boot. He's on the gyrocopter now. Nightfall, Nightfall oh. trying to fight back. They've got the Void down the first time, but can they get it oh. the second time? Not the quite, divine, Nightfall the is down. The Divine oh, is on the it. deck. Manet has got the Divine Rapier. Oh boy. And they're out of it. It's a 4v4. Oh. G2IG, they have no carry against them, but they've left. Uh, to be fair, uh, they, there's, the, it, it's it's a gold issue, John. The gyrocopter's low on gold. And the pirate hats will help. If they, yeah, they do have one and save right? The pirate hats will eventually help. There is that, not too far off now. This, I, I like seeing this from Mane. You know, he instantly snatches that divine. Feels like he's learned from the qualifiers we watched before, Mike. From all of those divines being left in the ground, he has not, yes, he I instantly remember. snatched it. I love it. This is a different G2IG we're seeing. One that is not afraid of stealing back these divines. You love to see. <laughs> Uh, to be fair as well, like uh, I know they backed off and don't carry, but they don't have Chrono. And again, that's that's such a big part of why they're winning these team fights. Save did a great job of wasting the double as well. It, it felt like they shouldn't have been able to find Nightfall, but the Wind Waker stalled out enough that the second Chrono had to come out on that toss. Let's see here. GPK. The stuns are there. They've locked him down, but he's very, very confident in his ability to just tank through all that damage. So Manet's got an Aghanim Scepter with a Blessing on the way now, so he's just kind of had enough. So it help with the Divine, of course. Manet, jump in, Miero. For the, uh, the Viper Strike, they have oh, actually got the Lasso as well. They found two targets, Manet is gone. Manet is down the first, or rather the last life that he had. Meanwhile, JT also caught out of the Kunkka. Can they try and turn this team fight? A beautiful earth fight from Baboka. Where is Baboka going? In fact, he's running he right wanted the, the divine. divine. Oh, he wanted the Divine. <laughs> Baboka. <laughs> oh, Come on, Baboka. What are you that's doing? That's a soldier right there. What are you it's doing, a soldier, Mike. He could have divined no the Book of it. Shadows out. Nah. He believed, Mike. You can't blame a guy for trying to believe in it. I appreciate that belief. It's not enough. Again, they were forcing that high ground without the Chrono. Lots of play left from Bet Boom. 
They get that divine back. They can hand it over. I, can they hand it over to Nightfall? I don't think so. It's been dropped and picked up by an ally, so I guess it's just Nightfall's divine now. But he is universal. He does do a lot of damage anyway. Yeah. Nightfall trying to save up for another divine. Does have buyback ready, but if he wants a divine, it's going to cost him now. Last tower will fall. Last tier three at the very least. Eventually. There you go. I'll go for the Megas. Not that it really matters so much anymore. The last time I said that, it really did matter. So perhaps I shouldn't say that anymore. <laughs> that was at TI, by the way. TI main stage, I think it was, John. <laughs> Probably the worst place to say uh, Mega Creeps don't matter. As a cast, as uh, GPK. Jump is there. Toronto Tokyo looking for another lasso attempt. Not going to find it quite yet. And, and does that in fact go after X Nova with the lasso? Is not going to find the kill though. X Nova is perfectly fine. Meanwhile, the Ancient is fortified. In comes Mane now looking for the Viper. He's found a chrono onto Miero. Miero going for the Wind Waker out, but is not going to. Oh, he might just make it save. Is making it so hard for Miero to just die. Mane though, still chasing, has found the Viper. Two diebacks now divine? committed from Bet Boom. And the Divine is back on Mane. <laughs> How does that happen? Oh god, the creeps. The creeps, the go creeps. back. Oh. Oh, this My is goodness. a game. What the hell is this it Desolator in Toronto, Tokyo? What the Why hell is, is this? Why is it always G2IG? I don't know. Why is it always this team? <laughs> it's a jack buff, I'm telling you. It's good old KBBQ. He does something to his teams, and they, they end up always finding the best ways to make their manager calm. I'm sure he's enjoying this rifting game of Dota 2. <laughs> As one can absolutely enjoy to its max. No buyback for a Viper, no buyback for a Tusk. Buyback's Damage forced out from the side of G2IG. Damage Ramp Rune again for Monet. And another Divine uh, is queued up here, John. He wants another one. Just in case. Just in case he loses it, you know? Have that security on. See if they can uh, put this game to its end. They have a minute opening. <laughs> <laughs> My I mean, it, look, it's a good voice. It, it, it's a good voice, though. I might have to buy them. JT. Here we go. They're onto the GPK. Oh. Timberstorm GPK. He's copying a lot of damage. And now the Chrono. Mane again finding two targets. Nightfall is gone. Buyback's committed. GPK is going to desperately try and defend this somehow. But how do you do it? Mane is ignoring everyone. T4 towers are gone. GPK now will get his attention. But Mane, he just wants the Ancient down. He doesn't care anymore. Toronto looking for the lasso. He will not get it. Lincolns is broken with the lasso. Nightfall is going to die by the looks of it. And he is gone. And this game is well and truly over. There's no carry left. They've got nothing to play with. Oh G2 ID started. A 2-0 victory no up GG. against Bet Boom. Oh. I mean, you know, John, 38, 40 minutes into this game, it looked like they had...